The implications are huge as I speak these words to you now. As the thoughts cross my mind, our newspaper, The Imagination, is getting more serious here. These artists are getting hundreds of thousands of views, sometimes even a million. Artist Journal, June 9th, 2023, broadcasting from the editor's desk on the pirate ship in my mind on the high seas of the imagination. My name is Adrian Pocabelli. Welcome back. So, Popple. Popple, Popple, Popple. Last we looked at Popple, I think a week ago, was it? You know, uh, he had something like 25,000 followers, if memory serves. I looked again, and he's at 50,000 followers. 50,000 followers. And, you know, I just reloaded up this page. I mean, how many hundreds of thousands? Let's just take a quick look here. Before we look at the work, uh, which is called Throne of Three Realities. I mean, what are we at here? 172,000 views. This, you know, an hour ago was at like 150, 147, I think it was. So we're up 25,000 views in basically an hour. So this is incredibly interesting. And again, we're seeing the same thing with Strange Thing. What I would call exponential growth right now, like in the last week. And we're going to see another tweet from Strange Thing here in a second. Uh, but, you know, people, it's reminiscent of when Google and Facebook were started to become prominent. And people were like, but how are they going to monetize? Right. And it was the important thing was that they were getting the eyeballs that they're in, a, in this attention economy. They were able to get the attention, Google and Facebook. Well, you know, and what's interesting is the sales here are not like uh, like I'll show you in a second. Uh, but the sales, we're not seeing it translate into sales yet. And just like Google and Facebook, one assumes that if you can get a million views, well, that's going to turn into sales at a certain point as an artist. So super interesting here. Let's take a closer look. Uh, so this is the work. And again, let's actually very quickly look at the title again. Eden Fall, Throne of Three Realities. And again, a masterclass in a tweet here available on Manifold, putting almost like what I'd call like the, this is like the, uh, writing that you'd see in the matrix. I want to call it matrix writing here on realities. So, you know, pretty cool pixel art. This is probably pixel art in Japanese, I assume. And again, 172,000, 732 retweets. So, I mean, just awesome and highly suggest clicking on original image. So this is what I did for us. And so you can see the work here. And again, kind of topical here, VR, of course, Apple Vision Pro. It's probably the news of the week. And interesting as well, I mean, we have these kind of humanoid figures almost drugged out on their technology. And again, we have kind of classic popple iconography, eyeballs, and just cybernetics. Almost like an interesting mask here which is interesting, almost like a facial recognition, but also in the broken screen here, glitched out up here, but almost like the theater masks too of the comedy and tragedy that we see sometimes in theater. And also this big blob monster with three eyes, almost out of a mythology of sorts, with three, three horns. And this person on top, this woman figure, humanoid, on top so really cool composition as we've seen with popple he does sketches beforehand i'm not sure if they're digital or physical it almost they're hand drawn either way and so in a cool kind of like it almost feels like it see the light coming from above so just really interesting work here and man oh man is it resonating with the public 172,000 views here i mean this is off the charts here and I, you know, I was mentioning the other day. Maybe it's time to pick up Popple's work, and it is disappearing. I should have listened to my own advice. It's starting to disappear there on object, at least. This is interesting, though. Like, I mean, it hasn't for 147,000 views. Uh, one would think, uh, and maybe that's just people scrolling through and not even looking. But nevertheless, just the fact that they're giving him that much reach is significant right? And it hasn't translated into a bid yet. 
which is also interesting. But again, I come back to that Google Facebook example. You know, in this attention economy, the most important thing is that you have people paying attention to you. As an artist, there's that's the most difficult thing, you know, quote unquote, you know, and it's crass to use the word monetize in regards to art, but monetize later. Don't worry about the monetization now. Keep getting that insane reach. So that is interesting. Look at this. So shout out and congrats to Popple. Strange thing. Hit 121,000 followers on Instagram today from 104,000 on Monday. So we have 20% growth here from Monday, and it's not even the end of Friday, Friday morning. A 61.62% growth rate in eight months, but I mean, you have a 20% growth rate in the last four days. Uh, Next stop, 140K. Below is part of the new Renaissance Concept Cameo Collection, so continuing with the relief sculpture on uh, fashion. I mean, it's a brilliant fusion, nice and simple to understand. Renaissance artwork with fashion, and he's just, like, killing it, basically. And now he's starting to sign it, too, which is kind of cool. And I like the color, too, here. So has a great eye, strange thing, doesn't he? A great eye for color. And let me just show you the uh the instagram so there it is at 125,000 look at this 288,000 likes so i would maintain that the most top artists in the world would be pretty happy with that kind of result like i mean if you look at i don't know the top artists in the world are they getting that kind of result I mean, there are implications here that are pretty darn interesting. And the reason why these people maybe haven't been picked up by, you know, blue chip players or by William Morris, remember Claire Silver and William Morris agency, is because they just might not be aware yet. But if I'm at William Morris and I see someone's getting, an artist is getting a third of a million uh, likes, that's not even views, that's likes. I'm going, maybe we should talk to this guy. You know, maybe we should lock this guy in while we can, because this thing's going pretty wild. So just interesting, interesting. I mean, 248,000. This is on the pinned tweet here. 171,000. This isn't a one-off, is another, you know, takeaway here. This was posted yesterday, 10,000. So I mean, incredible, right? And let me just show you something. I brought this up on the slideshow. So one of the uh, hashtags here on this work is iPhone X, for example. So I clicked on the hashtag on my phone and look at where he is. He is at the top. And I mean, okay, iPhone X, who is, you know, necessarily doing a search on iPhone X, but not a terrible hashtag either, though. Not the worst hashtag I've ever seen. And he is at the top. 10.1 10.1 million posts and there is strange thing basically looks like number two or here's a video and then the number one photo so that is insane um so again big shout out and congrats to strange thing again interestingly not translating into a ton of sales here here we have four of this edition here we have two of this edition and this reserve here is still at two east i don't think anybody has bid on it yet uh, just quick look. Nobody has bid on it yet. So hasn't translated into sales yet is my take on this. So I would say the more important thing is the reach uh, or is the attention. I mean, again, uh, the that is the hard part, I would argue. Uh, nice comment from Strange Thing 2 on yesterday's show. Uh, thank you so much for amazing feedback on my work, friend, and acknowledging the hustle. Yes, so strange thing, uh, also say, yeah, this made my day, which is awesome. Appreciate you, likewise. And yeah, that hustle is definitely recognized and appreciated. Again, it is inspiring. And thank you, Fake Smile and Clown Vamp, for the extra comments there. It's really fun. It's a really fun community out here. Uh, So actually, and speaking of community, I met someone from Ordinals, the Bitcoin Ordinals yesterday. I'll actually show you. I want to show, this is a good moment, uh, to show 
Uh, this was a show I went to, a, like an affordable art show, basically. So all works are basically under 2,000 euros. So not necessarily cheap. Uh, and I mean, some pretty nice works. There are a lot of good unrecognized artists out there. Is kind of like, I mean, these are pretty cool paintings up here. Uh, and, and just in general, I mean, so this was also super cool, kind of doing Mario and like Eastern, let's say, you know, yoga, yogi iconography, combining them on cardboard with these markers, like just really cool work. So just a couple of highlights there from last night. And uh, yeah, let me continue here. So I, yeah, and the person I was talking to at, at, who helped with ordinals, I think one of the main people, I uh, was mentioning how the crypto, uh, how the NFT space or crypto had kind of slowed down and it's true. And uh, there are a couple of things I wanted to mention because he showed me though on Ordinal, some of these collections like the Yuga Labs collection is at 2.2 Bitcoin as a floor. They're abstract, which is like $70,000. And we've seen in Ethereum, the liquidity get a little bit sucked out where it's kind of NFTs aren't quite doing as well as they were, say six months to a year ago. And I'm starting to wonder, has some of that liquidity gone into Bitcoin? Because we're seeing some pretty high prices. So that money has to come from somewhere, right? And this was also interesting. So crypto has been doing okay, but nothing special. Whereas AI stocks, have been going to the moon, right? So from an investment perspective, I thought this just appeared in my feed, but I thought it kind of, you know, as we look at the sales, say of artists uh, not being thrilling, let's say, even though on Tezos, they're, I'd still say they're very healthy and very liquid. Uh, you know, you can, there are still flippers. And as long as there are still flippers, that means you can probably sell, resell works within a day, let's say, uh, so that to me is a sign of a healthy market because the flippers aren't going to be there if they're not making money. And I still see flippers. So to me, that's a sign of a healthy market. Uh, but anyways, interesting. If you're in crypto, pivot to AI. And so what's kind of cool about Strange Thing is it's both kind of crypto art, quote unquote, and AI. So as artists, we can pivot to AI and creativity, you know, in a sense. It, so I, you can do both. So just kind of an interesting, provocative thought here from Jason uh, from the All In podcast. And a couple of comments here. Thank you, We Throw Rocks. Agreed. What a cool crowd. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for hosting. I really enjoy your perspective and plentiful positive vibes. Well, thank you. I uh, appreciate the comment. And Human Boy Vibes, uh, loving Green Ginger's uh, traffic work here. So very cool. Shout out to everybody, Bombattle and Leprechant. Thank you for the comments yesterday. And continuing on, Clown Vamp. I thought this was quite interesting. I like the label AI artist. In the same way, a painter is proud to be a painter. I want you to know I'm using this crazy mach machine that sucked up all of art history and turned it into a crazy neural net that I can twist and manipulate and break. Seems like a good label to me. Yeah, especially, I would say, if AI is the main focus of your art, then why not? I think it sounds all right. And, uh, you know, in a year, everybody might be wanting to call themselves the AI artists when this may blow up some more. Especially when, again, if Twitter's going to start giving this insane reach, and it was already there. I mean, we saw it with uh, Neurocolor was getting pretty insane reach, and we're going to see that again uh, today. But all to say... Uh, it's pretty exciting out there. Let's just put it that way uh, with these, uh, with the amount of eyeballs that are seeing this art. And so, yeah, AI artists, I agree. Uh, nothing wrong with that doesn't, as long as, I mean, I, I don't know if I, I put AI in my work. I don't know if I'd want to be called an AI artist only because I do so many other things. So I wouldn't want to necessarily uh, be pigeonholed into that. But I, there, I mean, there are some of the, most amazing artists in the space are uh, are AI artists. Forgive the wild hair, my friends. Uh, unknown collector, GM friends. Don't put some kind of competition hashtag in your titles of your minted artworks, please. Take yourself and your art serious. So this idea that maybe you'd put a hashtag in the titles of your minted artworks. So I, I take the point, but at the same time, if 
I, I take the point, and I think it's a fair point. That being said, I don't. Ju- I'm very slow to judge. Let's put it that way, because I do understand what it's like, uh, you know, to put out artwork and for there basically to be one like and no reach at all. You know, very short story here. Like I remember, you know, remember in 2021 when they started putting out the engagement farming tweets, like post your NFT, and they still do that once in a while, but they're not quite as popular when it first started happening. And then people would put their artworks. I thought to myself, like, oh, that kind of cheapens your art and that sort of thing. But then, like, one of the most famous people in the space before he really blew up was Justin Aversano, before he blew up. And he was doing that, like, consistently. And, I mean, within, like, a month, he actually totally blew up. So then, and then I ended up doing it a couple of months later, and I made my biggest sales from works, and I can't put a direct correlation uh, from works that I had put, because I swallowed my pride and said, well, you know, here I am with my one like on my artwork. Maybe I should post it. So on one of these, you know, things, it seemed to work for Justin Aversano. And I, and he did a, he was a big hustler, by the way, in the best sense of the term. He was in Clubhouse. He would fall, he would message everybody. So full props and credit where it's due uh, to Justin Aversano. Again, and a, 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 the moral of the story is the hustle matters. The hustle matters. So just kind of interesting here. So all to say, if you have, you know, if you're new to the space, you have no followers and whatever, I'll be very slow to judge. Ultimately, the work is the uh, ultimate uh, arbiter of is all that really matters at the end of the day. But I take Unknown Collector's point. Again, uh, I kind of lightly agree, but I'm very slow to judge would be my qualifier on that one. So just kind of an interesting uh, talking point. Arata, and I thought this was quite interesting too. So this is just an example for me of how I am, lo- this was, remember we saw this as a GLB uh, file, as a 3D sculpture in on object, and he did it in collaboration, Rata with Acto X, Exacto.tez. So then this video gets uh, posted, if you're ordering if you're already in Lisbon, don't miss it. So what I thought was interesting about this is this is probably a digital file, but I'm starting to not be able to tell the difference anymore. The light is so convincing that this looks like maybe they did make a 3D sculpture and that this is just some sort of fancy camera work. I mean, the camera work to me is the biggest clue that this might be digital and not quote unquote real uh, because it's kind of pretty. How would they do this? You know, so it almost feels like a digital uh, situation here. But other than that, when you look at the actual textures, the background, the light, it's totally convincing here of Rada's work. So anyways, if you're in Lisbon at NFC, non-fungible conference, uh, go check out Rada's work there. Check out Dana Ulama. And this was just posted an hour ago, and it is moving up the charts quick with reach here too. And the music is awesome. Expanding the palette a little bit. Really nice work here. Love the palette. So kind of going a little bit beyond uh, the previous purple and pink. Here it's kind of like purple and red pink. Very, very nice. Again, magic of art is often in the color. Speaking of color, neuro color. 100,000 views. This is from yesterday. So... It's not new for NeuroColor to do this well, um, but it, it, again, another example of just like the incredible reach that some of these artists are getting uh, on Twitter. So again, like it, it's something to be said here and the public clearly is resonating with it if uh, Twitter is kind of feeding it back into everybody's feed. Die with the most likes. Here's a work that I missed last week. Kind of an interesting, uh, darker themed work in the sense that it has a dark background, almost like a negative of sorts. And the looks like uh, maybe a meat grinder here, which also looks like a laptop, but hard to say. I wasn't exactly sure what was going on in this. And then kind of like an old street light, like you'd see in a Sherlock Holmes print or something. And then three figures here. Uh, after the street light stopped grieving... So I'm not exactly sure what this is about, but it's interesting. And wait till you see how much this sold for. 
Big shout out to Mark to die with the most likes. Uh, Twelve Tezos. Twelve Tezos, $22,300, my friends. After the streetlights stopped grieving. That is incredible. So that was posted on June 1st. So that escaped me there. Uh, and also, look at what's available. Oh my God, I almost have to stop the program. This was sold. 0.1 ETH each for these RJ one of ones. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay, so they are up and running. One has been sold. I may have to run to get run through this episode here. Okay, Bazaya to the moon. Doesn't that series look amazing though? Like if I was rich, I'd just buy them all or whatever's left and then just imagine that in the metaverse, that room. That would be super cool. Uh, Flying Satoshi to the moon. So here, Bazaya's uh, Sky is the Limit series and we saw Notorious B.I.G. So here... It's almost like Bazaya's heroes here. Satoshi Nakamoto is often memed as this guy here. Added a cigarette and looks like he's on kind of a beautiful, comfortable chair that looks like a rocket ship going to the moon. Some cool uh, runners here and everything. So just a cool artwork from Bazaya as usual. 60 Tezos on secondary, not a terrible price. I mean, Tez that would be $50. Tezos is below a dollar and only an addition of 10. Not bad for a Bazaya work. Yan Lucas Migone with a new work, and this is on secondary for $15. So nice and affordable here. And again, playing with these kind of figures with the skeleton on the black figures here, and then playing with color, where this person, it almost looks like an Italian composition, Italian painting from like 16th or 17th century. And, but who knows, even like a Rubens or something. Uh, and then you see this kind of hot pink color, which is kind of linked here to this person here. So it's interesting, not exactly sure what's going on in what looks like an up upside down kind of impressionist like landscape. So mysterious work here from Jan Lucas Migone, cool as ever and interesting. Ed Marola, one of one for 50 Tezos, $46. For this Ed Marola one of one, you dream I am using text, which is not common, and some dithering here, experimenting as ever with the palette, which is interesting with the color palette, nice and small too. So very interesting. Here's another work, uh, Tego Wear, part of kind of like the Tego Dago uh, theme that Ed keeps returning to, which I think uses this little figure here, which acts as a focal point and a point of contrast, small pink flashing figure with this kind of foggy dithered cityscape here. Really nice work also. So this is for Tezos, edition of 23, take a wear. And here is recent work also by Ed Marola. So there's actually quite a bit here. Remember the bull that was part of the bullish, I think 23. This is uh, part of the Tezos 200 Tezos event. Uh, one of one for 200 Tezos demon portrait and more. So go check that out. And also Santiago with some new experimentation here playing with these black lines. As you can see, uh, interesting kind of new shape, a new texture a new brush of sorts for Santiago and a new kind of color scheme here too. It almost feels like a bit of a light gray background. So cool. I love it. You see that white over here and you see the white here. I find that quite powerful. It's quite small, but when you use a kind of a light gray background, then to use white like that is a very fun uh, thing to do. Something I like to do. So Retro Manny, how did I miss this? Uh, this wonderful, Wonderful work here. I mean, you just see the passion. Like, Manny loves pixel art. So, this has passion written all over it. And it really is a celebration of what I feel is like, you know, of, of pixel art, of everything. I mean, you just see it here. It, it, this is like Manny's joy turned into pixels here. 
his love. I mean, that's all I see here is passion. Retro, retro Wave City, level one. So it looks like we're going to get more of this and created. Definitely, it mission accomplished to celebrate, keyword celebrate, the one-year anniversary of Retro Manny's Genesis Cyberpunk collection. So a brilliant, like if I'm some corporation and I need pixel art and I say I want a celebration, if I got that, I'd say you gave me exactly what I was looking for. Like that is a celebration, amazing. And then as part of that, so I picked that up uh, and you get a, at least I got an airdrop. I assume everybody does. Yes, gift it to level one people, people who bought the last one. So I, I assume he makes the music too. Again, you have to love it. I like the passion here, the love. Uh, so really cool work from Retro Manny. Uh, thank you for the airdrop uh, on, on that second piece. So everybody gets that gifted to them if they buy the first piece. Uh, cool work here by Not A Number. The other Not A Number, N-A-N, A-I and GIMP. And I just thought this was an interesting piece. Another using that technique of just kind of creating different textures, uh, digital textures, which give the whole thing movement. Different, like, uh, uh, what I'm tempted to call exports of this. Uh, and, you know, different renditions of the uh, dithering, let's say, or of the bitmapization. And then you just put it all together in a GIF and all of a sudden it moves. And so just kind of interesting. and kind of gives it life in a certain sort of way. AI and GIMP from NAN. Buy for five Tezos. One of one. So that is a pretty good deal. Blue Retina. The day it rained. So, of course, there are those forest fires in British Columbia that I don't know if you saw the pictures in New York. A lot of people were passing them around pretty almost like Blade Runner 2049 type images, just like uh, orange uh, backgrounds. So pretty interesting. And this was posted by Blue Retina. This came out maybe a month or so ago but almost as a kind of uh, commentary of sorts, we might say, in this blue scene here. Again, kind of that moving background and through different you know, exports seemingly. And then what looks like maybe a light on a car or maybe a light on a street pole and what looks like a tree that is also a fire. So just kind of interesting work from Blue Retina available for 30 Tezos on secondary. Also the isolationist here uh, with another interesting work another portrait which he likes to do i think it's a combination of physical and digital i think this definitely has i mean it's getting hard to tell it's getting really hard to tell what is i mean the brushes are getting so good the ai is getting so good that it, like i mean again i think it's strange things work from yesterday where the texture of the paint i mean it's getting incredibly convincing and so continuing on here, uh, who knows? I, but I think it's physical, uh, maybe a combination of physical and digital. And you see the kind of sad, melancholy figure in the background, the heretic by the isolationist edition of 20. And that sold out very quickly on primary or at least in a few hours for 30 Tezos each. So nice market there for the isolationist. Actually, it took about 12 hours. Sorry. Yeah, 12 hours from four to four in the morning. So congrats to Isolationist. Right next year was just another cool kind of abstract, surrealist abstract is what I want to call it. Again, has a bit of a tangy, Eve's tangy feeling. And what really stood out to me actually are these red outlines here, which kind of give the whole uh, work life in, in a sense. So nice little contrast there and just interesting uh, development of this whole series for two, two Tezos on uh, object here, Celestials. And continuing on, now this was the artist I discovered the other day from Hasdruba Waffle or Authentic Waffles, Kel1 Art. Remember the person on the phone and on their bed and it was like their bedroom? Well, here is another one and this is called Two Friends Talking, also edition of five, very low edition for three Tezos. And it's kind of funny actually. So you see it's kind of split in half, one person in their living room with the window open and a background, the facts of life, 
which brings me back to my youth and an Xbox in the background, a laptop. Interestingly, their uh, postures mirror each other. I think. I think that was kind of an interesting move. And they're both on the phone. One is at their pool, probably at their summer home there, their beautiful summer home. And one is just in their living room here and just really interesting work. So nice find from his Drupal waffle there. Uh, and of course, Kappa Sage with, I think we could call this a pastiche of Grand Theft Auto. So Grand Theft Sage with works by Kappa Sage in the uh, places where you'd normally see the video game. And <laughs> that's pretty funny. So that is pretty cool. That is an addition of 21 for three Tezos 40. And Austin with the work, 44 gallon Tez Rider or Ardier, Ridier. And so this is for the Bullish 23 event. And let's actually hit play here. Interesting combination of what I would call collage and then kind of like pixelated uh, feet here on the bull and you know again has a collage feeling to it almost has a Robert Rauschenberg feel with the tire and the horns but then here it's clearly kind of like a paper collage sort of thing and moving so anyways cool work I really like the tail actually this does look like the kind of work uh, you could see in a museum the uh, you know as far as the tire the oil can the horns and the electric oh, electrical cord so anyways cool work from Austin edition of two it is likely sold out at this point or uh, 40 or yeah I'm not exactly sure so two transferred and the rest were burned so that is cool uh, Mirai Mizue this is quite interesting. The explosion that destroys the universe and the explosion that creates the universe. It's kind of a Big Bang theme here from Mirai Mizui, whose work I know mostly from Twitter, I think. And almost like a cosmogony of sorts, uh, which is the, uh, the generation of the universe as a story, as a myth, would be a cosmogony. So maybe a visual cosmogony here <laughs> from Mirai Mizui. Lewis Osborne with a couple of interesting works here. So I believe this was the first. It's called Rush Hour. Nice composition, nice piece and everything. Great color using all the classic Lewis Osborne tropes. And then here's this other work, Morning Dip, which is also beautiful. I'm a coffee guy, so I'm, I like this one even more. But I mean, they'd hang together so well side by side. And check this out. So... This is using Manifold XYZ, so basically if you bought one of the first ones, you could get the second one. So I'd be one of those people that would burn the first so I could get the second. Although I'd probably want to buy two of the first so then I could have them side by side there on my wall in the metaverse. So very cool here, 57 minutes for morning dip. So just cool. Total redeemed zero? That can't be right. Price free. I wonder if that's true. Could you possibly get a Lewis Osborne one of one for like for for burning one of these other tokens? I should another reason to finish this show quickly. This is a work from February that I missed sold for 2.2 ETH, I should add, which is a nice price. Uh, and this was a work that I believe I missed. So I just want to show it here of a factory factory here by Lewis Osborne. So pretty cool. And kind of like a mass reproduction and almost creating the subject here. Uh, and we're all being kind of manufactured here by society. So pretty charming, actually, this whole thing. I mean, amazing animation, right? Uh, and here is the person being created. So, I mean, quite brilliant, isn't it? Quite a long animation, I might add. So the, the construction of the subject here, mass production, cool work from Lewis Osborne, a couple of works by Dan W, Daniel W. And this is called Materialize with, again, a lot of uh, what I'd be tempted to call just significant iconography here, whether it's this interesting shape in the middle or the position of the hands, the posture of the hands and the knife, the sword of Damocles almost. So just full of what I want to call symbology, if that's a word and everything here. So cool work from Daniel W. And we have another one in the Ars Goetia series, Marbas, which is 
Uh, fifth demon listed in the Arsgoisia, controlling 36 legion of spirits and is said to appear in the shape of a great lion, but will turn into a human under the summoner's request. So I've never even heard of that one. So that is a cool one, and it looks great. And look at all the great texture on the black there. And that interesting snake, too, on the staff, all just filled with, again, like significant iconography. Very cool work. And let's just see 20 left at only three Tezos. So deals to be had there. Pipi Universal. Esta bien que me emocione ir al little. So I don't speak Spanish, but I thought this looked pretty cool. Uh, this is a real question I ask myself live and living in Barcelona. Well, lucky you is what I would say. Barcelona is beautiful. And so is Madrid, which I'd love to return to. And that looks like the Lidl grocery store. So maybe that is the Lidl that's being referred to here. Anyway, really nice uh, work, almost like digital collage with drawing combined together. Kind of gives a rich feel to it, doesn't it? Interesting shadow here too. So nice work, edition of five for only four Tezos from PP Universal. Francois Gamma with a couple of older works from 2009 that have just been minted. F error or fairer, this sold out, uh, which is uh, and now is at 333 Tezos. So very cool work here. And here's another one. And this, I believe you can still get for three Tezos, another uh, screen here. So not huge uh, pixel size here. Interestingly, like I had to magnify that. So a couple of cool works, screen, screen error, 10 render screen errors. So continues to be super prolific here. Minting old work a little bit here. And then here is Mason with some really cool, what feel like, I don't know, is this, it feels like glitched out ROMs, but completely glitched out differently. Some sort of glitch going on here. So just interesting glitchscape made with processing 1080 by 1080. So maybe not a ROM, just a glitchscape. Pretty cool. It would probably hang well with, uh, I want to call it data, data bender or something. I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but interesting work. Here's another one. Uh, fairly interesting abstracts here. I'd say Sin City Datascapes, Glitchscape made with processing. Just very interesting. I'm a big fan of Mason's work. Edition of eight, now for 25, uh, one on secondary from PP Universal. So small scene here. Silva Santos, who I don't think I've seen before with, and this looks like a glitch ROM, because that looks like Batman and it looks like it is glitched out here. So just kind of another interesting glitch ROM artist. And continuing on, Figments, who is Captain, uh, and who's Cap'n, I should say, and I believe, and with some more Spanish there, and just another cool pixel art work here. So very cool. And here is Renki, who continues to experiment. Minami Hyuga, edition of 10 for 10 Tezos each. And just kind of interesting visual experimentation here. And continuing on another work that is glitchy, Ex Mortal. It's another glitch work. I love to, I never get tired of palm trees, just like I never get tired of synthesizers. There is an artist, I think also out of Argentina, who also combines synthesizers and palm trees. Very wise individual here. So here you have a skull, what looks like on a desert island, and interestingly uh, juxtaposed with this old, you know, cinema projector, which is kind of interesting. Ex Mortal, and yeah, real feels. Another work by Ricano, another video game work, Entertainment System, cool title. And you see the dithered out 3D animation, which breaks apart the retro gaming device. Uh, edition of five, there are, there's one left by Ricano here. So all sorts of stuff to buy today. Ellie Lowe with a cool work here. Let's, we haven't seen Ellie Lowe for a couple of weeks here, a few weeks. So time to check in. Again, always mysterious, always really nice and cool. Great, great music as usual. So seeming to be telling a bit of a story here, trash bag number 68, very cool. And look at this. Uh, so this is, I think, Unity. So you, see, so you can use 
I actually got it. So, as you can see, I'm actually doing okay at this game. Okay, so anyways, that is 28 Tezos on, probably on secondary. It's probably sold out right away. 230, sold for nothing. Sold for a song and was gone within basically 12 hours it took. So that is interesting. And Kramer here with another work. Again, I think that's Random, Random Girl 4K, if I remember right. Landscape number 13 on the Icy Mountains. They have trespassed. So just more cool kind of CGI work out there. And from Kramer, a very cheap, 90 Tezo cents, so almost free there. And here's a work by Tooks that came out with some figures. So trying out some different stuff. Always super interesting colors here. Etching our paths through the tantalizing scent of love. So just interesting piece here from Tooks. And continuing on, Marina Amadova with another beautiful work here. Summer's Canvas kind of reminds me of Ophelia a little bit. Uh, from those pre-Raphaelite painters in the 19th century, I believe. So, yeah, anyways, nice uh, AI artwork here from Marina Amadova, edition of 50 for three Tezos. So art is really cheap now with the Tezos price. And Venta with AI, so a combination of digital painting and AI. I love the square cloud in the background there. The Three Graces, so a traditional classical theme here. Uh, treated in a very modern way here by Venta. So again, these kind of plasticine figures, skulls, and again, this outrageous kind of rectangular cloud there, uh, very interesting on their Mount Parnassus of sorts here. Available for five Tezos, how many are left? 10 left. And a physical work from, you know, the artist Walk, and so worldwide shipping. So, and then put the, so out of Italy, so then puts the eBay, and again, just beautiful artwork. And check this out. So 86 euros now is the offer. Looks like there's 41 offers. I mean, I 41 offers. That is pretty interesting. Uh, so here are, so selling on eBay. And look at how professional walk is. This is what you're supposed to do, which is kind of make it like have, this is basically what I would call a replacement for a certificate of authenticity, which is, you know, you have your stamp and everything. This is very professional. Uh, so that is impressive. And maybe why Walk is getting so many uh, bids. So just interesting. And that is your show, my friends. Have a great weekend. Have a wonderful Friday. The weather is turning good over here. And so, yeah, thanks again for joining me. Until next time, take care.